all so amazing. <laughs> it's like, it's, no, really, it's 5.25. It's, it's, you know, it's late and you're all here. So give it up for yourself for being awake still. Come on. At least I'm excited about it. So uh, to start off, uh, I have a question. Um, like, how many of you are developers or call yourself engineers? Yeah. Okay. Good. So when you are working in any day-to-day -day scenario, you're deploying a new application, or you're trying to do some SRE work, how many tabs on average do you have open? <laughs> Is it 10 or more? 20 or more? Ooh, ooh, oh, that's a lot. Uh, 40 or more? No way. no way. Okay. So you've come to the right session because we are going to talk about a developer portal called uh, Backstage um, and uh, how you can leverage it uh, by creating a plugin. We'll also talk about uh, Kubernetes security, of course, because of course. we have Armo in the house. So. Yep. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah we're going Thanks. to combine those yeah. things, right? That's <laughs> odd, but we will do that. Yeah, yeah. so uh, let me introduce uh, myself. I am Susanna Daniels. I work at a company called Port. Um, we uh, have a developer portal, um, and I come from the Netherlands. Actually, I come from the lowest part of the Netherlands, and I live on a dike above it, so I can just watch down like 10 meters below me. Um, it's, uh, it's more than six meters below sea level, which is uh, weird because like, it's basically on the water here. Anyways, I like snowboarding, uh, but I uh, like even more talking about developer experience and how you can improve it. Thus, I talk about developer portals a lot. And I am Rotem Rafael. I'm director of engineering at RMO. And I have tons of years of developing, like really um, into details. And in the past few years, I'm into Kubernetes and to Kubernetes security in my role, of course. And like fun fact that I'm doing is practicing yoga a lot. And I really like to watch my basketball um, team. You know, it's weird. I'm a woman. I'm watching basketball. But I'm going to court. They have a game in half an hour. So I hope we'll finish by then. Um, and that does, those are my favorite things um, that I'm doing. So without further ado. Yeah, there's also some overlap, by the way. Um, while you practice yoga and probably lie on the floor a lot, me doing snowboarding is practically the same. Yeah. But anyways, um, I am, well, you can probably tell I'm old. I started doing software development many, many years ago. And back then it was uh, fun, just as it is, is now. It was just a lot simpler. Um, I had an application, which was a monolith. Um, we had to know everything to extend it. There were just a few programming languages available that you could actually use to build modern applications. Modern. Um, you needed to build basically everything yourself. There were not many frameworks around, um, and life was good. Um, we uh, had to do complex things to solve simple problems. Um, uh, so much different uh, as, it is, uh, as it is today. Because if you look at modern day software development, um, it is quite complex. We are talking about microservices. Of course, we all love microservices here. Um, and to build one single application, you need a lot more expertise, different expertise. You need a, need a lot more different types of technologies. Because there are so many platforms you need to run uh, your software on so many platforms you need to be able to use the software. Um, there is all these things that we like to do to extend the functionality into our application. We need APIs, we need backend applications, we need data, um, you know, basically everything. GPT, anyone? Um, and it takes a whole village to build an application and to run it. So we solve very complex problems nowadays. And for solving that complex, uh, um, those complex problems, um, we need all that. But to, to be able to do the software development, we also need a lot of tooling. Well, you know this oh. landscape chart probably. Uh, it has exploded in the past uh, few years. And the reason is that um, we need to have technology to help us. We need to 
have technology to help us develop software. So it is quite complex. And you need a lot of tooling to be able to build and run and do observability. So that's a lot to juggle around with, right? So if you deploy an application, chances are that, well, I think that the 40 tabs, I, I, I should have asked AD. I hope that then the hands go down. But you need to open all, all those tabs. You need to context switch all the time. And that is problematic because it takes away the focus from what you actually try to do. It's solving problems. So when you are actually sitting behind your computer, you want to write code and you do not want to click through various portals. Because everybody has a solution with a great portal and you like juggling them around on the tabs. Not that good. So to overcome all these modern problems, we try to figure out new things. Um, we try to organize ourselves. Um, we create uh, movements. We do DevOps. We automate things so we can deploy faster. Um, then we say, oh, we are deploying so fast, uh, but we also need to operate it. We, we need to make sure that everything's running and we, we need SRE. And then the latest buzzword is platform engineering, which I think is an, you know, an evolving thing, and that's good. Um, but it's not the only solution, because you can build a platform, you can automate it, you can get all the tooling, put all the tooling in that you need for your security, for your observability. But at the end of the day, you're all shifting right, deploying faster, but all the other things come shifting left. So one way to solve that um, is by... Uh... <laughs> oh yeah, I figured let's put all the buzzwords on there, right? And let's combine them, because this is the day-to-day -day reality. You're not only doing the DevOps, you're doing the FinOps, the MLOps, right? But um, let me go to, the, to a solution, and that is an internal developer portal. Um, an internal developer portal is there not to replace all those tooling, toolings that you have, not to be a single source of truth. It is there to grab all those different tools take out the most essential information that you need and put that into one place. It is, if you have platform engineering and you have that button that you, you know, the tool that you can use and deploy environments or you have an SRE tool, you want to create self-service for that. You want to empower the people to actually use the technology, right? Um, and in such a portal, you would combine that all. So when you talk about a developer portal, people would expect a catalog where you can find all the services. You would expect self-service. You might expect documentation, everything that you need to be collaborative with each other. And you add to that all those different tools that you have and give the insights so that people will eventually switch to some tool, uh, but they don't need to. They will only do it when they actually need the tool. Not when they want to see if something's green or red. So, let's talk Backstage. Backstage is an open platform for creating your developer portal. Uh, open as in the sense of open source. It's a CNCF project. And a very great one. Um, platform in the sense of it is extensible. So one of the reasons that Backstage is so successful is that when you actually deploy Backstage into your organization, you can extend the functionality using plugins. So for every tool that you have, you would use a plugin and you would implement that. Then you can enjoy the benefits of a developer portal. It is open. You can ingest anything that you have in your catalog and create the user experience, the developer experience that you need, that you want. Now, if there's a plugin or some specific uh, uh, data that you have, company data or something very specific, you can also create your own plugins. And that is actually a great way when you implement the developer portal and you want to drive the adoption, when people can get the ownership and feel the ownership and have the ownership of the portal, it is a better thing because you collaborate on the same thing. It's an inner source movement that you're creating, actually. 
And that is the reason why Backstage was so successful at Spotify. And luckily, they decided to open source it. So you can all benefit of the knowledge of thousands and thousands of developers around the world. There's over a thousand companies who adopted Backstage. So you don't have to write every plugin yourself. As you can see, there's a lot of them available just on the website. You can go there. You can download them. Uh, you can install them. Uh, you can modify them, of course, because everything uh, will be, uh, will be open, uh, open source. So there's different uh, types of, uh, of plugins. Um, one of the most common ones is, um, is the front-end plugin. It is a plugin which you would create when you have some data and you want to display it uh, in your portal. Um, and that sounds simple, but it is so effective because it takes away the context switching for the developers. But you can also add more functionality to that. And for that, you would also create a backend plugin. Right? So if you have some logic that needs to be in there, you can do that. You can add storage, and you can expand it in that way. So building your own plugin is a very, very fun thing to do, because you immediately have the success. You immediately can add value with your developer portal. Now, I can tell, uh, talk a lot about you know, writing your plugin, but I know for a fact that there is this company who had, um, and this is very common, by the way, uh, who had a hackathon. And uh, during the hackathon, they decided, hey, we have this open source tool. Um, why don't we just write for our open source tool a plugin in Backstage? And so they did. And we were at a conference and we were talking about this, that they were going to do it. It was, uh, I think, uh, just November or something yeah. like that. Um, and now we're done. And we decided, well, whenever okay. you're, you're, you're successful with the plugin, let me know. Let's do a talk together. Yeah. And here we are. Okay. So <laughs> let's switch to a very good example <laughs> of how you can uh, secure anything. With this plugin and with Cubescape. So... I know that security talks are very frightening, right? And I don't want to scare you. But look what Gartner says, that by 2025, 99% of, um, of your clusters will have at least one misconfiguration inside, right? And those are really scary numbers. And we don't want to go there, right? We're all here to make it all easy, to make it all work, to make it all secure. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to talk about, you know, shift left, right? How do you know this uh, phrase well? Um, I know this phrase very well. I'm talking about it a lot. But the thing is that we're all talking about it, but how do you make this thing practical, right? How do you really implement this shifting left security, right? Developer, as Susan said, are really rapidly developing everything to the right. Very, very rapidly, the CI/CD um, pipeline makes it also. And in security, well, we stay behind, and we need to shift it left. And we really need to know it ahead of time. So um, Kubernetes security, right? Because we need to secure a cluster. I heard some people told me um, when I was in the other company, oh, I'm going to move from VM to Kubernetes. I'm secure now, right? Well, you know the answer. Um, so what we're doing is we're using Kubescape, and we actually created Kubescape, which is an open source solution, CNCF sandboxing, for detecting misconfiguration and vulnerabilities, and also giving you a very nice picture of RBAC misconfigurations. And with this, um, we actually make the life of the DevOps really easier because we are standing across the pipe from the code to the cluster itself. And we're saying, hey, we're shifting left, right? So what do we need to do? So I'll tell you a little bit about Kubescape and what we're doing with that. So we have like over 150, even I think now it's already 200 tests that we call it control for misconfiguration. We are <coughs> We have those frameworks that you know as CIS, MITRE ATT&CK, and the NSA that we just took all those 
um, not automation test, manual test, and make it automatic so you can check your cluster with all those frameworks and controls. And, <coughs> and basically what we did is having a YAML, a Helm chart, um, a Kubernetes object, and a repositories as an input to the, to the Kubescape and the control library written in Rego for OPA, of OPA. And the output is really nice because we need to be integrated with a lot of, a lot of um, subsystems. So you can have it as a CLI, and you can have it as an XML and JSON and other different file types. And you can have it in our Armor platform, which is a SaaS environment. And you can have it as a Lens integration and in Prometheus. And lately, we do have it as, yeah. So we created this backstage uh, plugin uh, for Kubescape, which is another output for what we're scanning inside the cluster. <coughs> so this is how the CLI looks like. Um, so you see we're scanning. It's a bit tiny, I'm sorry. But um, you can see we're scanning the NSA framework, for example. And then you can see here the table of what is the control, the test, and what is the risk that you're getting? How many resources did we scan? How many failed? And what is the risk score eventually? And we're doing it for all the framework that I just mentioned. And here is what happened. Hmm. Back and forth. Oh, OK. <laughs> so, and that's the ARMA platform, OK? The SAS version of Kubescape, where we're seeing <coughs> the dashboard, the compliance, the vulnerabilities, the RBAC as a graph, and you can watch it as well. But we're here, not just for that, because that's awesome. That's my team, right? But uh, we are for the hackathon. So, as Susan mentioned, we had a hackathon like a few months ago, I think. Um, and there, is some, there was a developer who says, listen, I know this backstage thing, and developer portal has become a real thing lately, so let's make an um, initiative in this hackathon of building a plugin for backstage. I told him, backstage what? So let's try that, but we need to learn about it. So it took us two days, <laughs> just two days, to build a uh, backstage plugin that I'll show you in one minute. And that is a major thing because that says that building a plugin is not an issue, right? It's not taking a long time. It's really straightforward. And you can all integrate it in with your application or just get some other plugins, as Susan uh, mentioned before. So here is the backstage Kubescape plugin. So first thing we're doing is creating an account, right? And writing the account name, clicking on the create one, and just copying, pasting this Helm chart, this Helm command to your cluster in order to run the Helm chart for scanning for misconfiguration, vulnerabilities, etc. cetera. Um, and then, OK, look what we got. We are having here all the failed controls um, all the failed tests that we found into your cluster, right? We have some network container, Linux hardening. I can't scroll down, but that's what we're getting, about 200 controls with their statuses. So we have the status, we have the name, we have the failed resources that I'll drill down in a minute. We have the description and the remediation, like how to fix this, right? So also backstage give us the filters. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so we have this filter, which is built-in backstage uh, capability, which is really nice. So we can filter by all those um, columns. And we have another rescan button above. So you can rescan your cluster, although it's a cron job that will rescan your cluster every day. Of course, you can adapt it, or you can just rescan according to what you want. So that is the, <coughs> that is the configuration scanning. And that's slow today. Another one. OK. So we talked about the resources that I clicked on this row, and I see the resources that have failed 
for certain reason. Okay, it can be a resource limit, it can be privilege uh, pod, it can be uh, naked pod, we call it, you know, pods without any um, fathers. Um, and we can see here all the resources that fail, but okay, great, Rotem, you gave us all the resources that fail, how do I fix those? So we're not just giving the remediation, we're also giving the fix button that you see right here, and when clicking it, <coughs> we see this page when you can see exactly what line do you need to fix or to add or missing you know, in your object. If it's a YAML, then you can see it right here. It's a Kubernetes object, of course. And we are just putting all the lines that are problematic. And you can check that out right here. So that's the first part of compliance. The second part is the vulnerabilities, <coughs> where you can see the vulnerability and basically the image, the workload that failed on specific CVEs. And you can see it all across here and what are the severities of those CVEs. I must say, we're getting to, you see that, right, in your clusters and you're overwhelmed most of the times, right? How many CVEs do you have in your cluster? 10,000. I have my mini cube and I have over 100. So, what we're now doing is adding a new killer feature. Okay, it will be out next week in a better version, and I really wanted to announce it today. It's called Relevancy, and what does it do? Actually, all those vulnerabilities that we're seeing here and CVEs are interesting, but it's not really interesting because there are a lot of packages that are not getting into the memory. So we're checking exactly what's into your memory. You're, we are using Falco for that. And we're checking exactly what's going on to your memory. And basically, we are narrowing the list. I can tell you, we test it in our production cluster. 20% was relevant. Not all critical, just relevant. Can be low, can be medium. All the 80% left is not relevant. You don't need to mess with it. So next week, hopefully, a uh, beta version is out. You can register and just check that out. Of course, it will be also here in the plugin of, Cube, of uh, Backstage. So some final thoughts. So developer portals right, are our new best friends. We don't want 40 tabs open. We really want a simple place to have it all. And given that, we need to have their security. We need to have it all the plugins that um, Susan showed uh, before. And also, you know, we're always shifting right with developing, and now we need to shift left. And I know most of us really don't like security, right? It's something that I need the DevSecOps to do that. No, 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 no. It's my CISA responsibility. And then my CISA call me and then the developer, and we need to update the package. That thing makes it easy, makes it visual, makes it visible to everyone, and you don't need to be an expert to understand that. So, what else? We really thank you for being here with us today, and I think that's time for questions. Yeah.